Hello, I'm Dr. Vicki Peterson. I recently started a Facebook group on digestion solutions and I'm very excited about it. We're getting a lot of interest, which is awesome. And digestion is something that, as I like to joke about with my patients, not exactly dinnertime conversation where you're talking about your bowel habits or your gas and things like that. But digestion is everything because you're only as good as you're turning your food into fuel because then that fuel is being delivered to all the cells of your body and keeping them healthy. It's just, it's pretty basic, but we don't tend to grow up thinking that way. It's like, I'm hungry, I eat, you know, I eat what I like, you know, <laughs> instead of what you're putting in your body, what type of fuel that's creating. And then sometimes you're putting in great fuel, but you're still not getting the benefit of it because your digestive tract is not working as well as it should. So it's, it's such a critical area and I'm really excited to have this group where we can discuss things and people can share not only their problems but their solutions and then I'm gonna interject with um, some help and, and some ideas and so today I wanted to start with uh, two questions I was asked and kind of go into that a little bit because they're really good areas. So the first one is about somebody who has a very chronic urgent diarrhea. And she says she knows what her trigger foods are, except sometimes she eats those foods and she's totally fine. Sometimes she doesn't eat those foods and she's not totally fine. And so you can start to want to pull your hair out because you think, you think you've isolated it. But if it was truly that, then, you know, pretty much you feel like every single time it, it, it should be predictable. And so she's, it's not predictable and urgency. If you've ever had food poisoning or just urgency and having to rush to the restroom, it can be very anxiety provoking. Am I going to make it? And then you're somewhere not at home. And if you have an accident, what a mess, you know, on and on. I don't need to get any more graphic than that. So, um, basically she's trying to figure out what to do. So uh, there can definitely, so if you think about, well, what diarrhea is, is things are passing too quickly through the gut. So it should be around 24 hours from when you eat to when you get rid of um, what the body doesn't need anymore, which is the stool. And um, if for a variety of reasons, the body can choose to add more water into the equation and really speed that up and then you'll get the looseness. Now, um, it can definitely be food sensitivities. We've for sure seen that. It can also be uh, the balance of the gut as far as the good bacteria and the bad bacteria and the amount of enzymes and if the gut's a little inflamed or irritated. So, it's, well, let's talk about inflammation for a moment. So if you have this sort of uh, low level inflammation, then sometimes depending on what the threshold is of that, food comes in and the body goes, no too much work, you know, it's kind of like you're at the very end of your day and your boss like gives you a stack and you're like, this is going to wait till tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm not doing this today. Right? So your gut can get kind of overwhelmed and it's just like, no, just, just get rid of it. Right? So it dumps a lot of water into the, in the colon and, and out it comes. Now, if it's inflamed and you, cause she had mentioned some like spicy foods or coffee seems to seem to be some trigger foods. Um, sure. If it's already inflamed and you add something like caffeine, that's acidic or some spicy foods, then that can aggravate it, but it's usually not the cause actually. And that's very interesting. Even acid reflux or any sort of irritation in the gut. So people say, yeah, something spicy really, really aggravates me. Um, it's, it's aggravating, but it's not causative. So there's a difference. So we want to get to the real root cause. And it is interesting that the two of the most common food reactions or food sensitivities people have are gluten and dairy, you know, so there's your, your bread and your milk or cheese, which, you know, that's what doctor, when your stomach's upset, it's like, Oh, have some bread have some milk you know, and that could be the worst thing in the world, but it sounds very innocuous and very bland. It's, it's interesting. I've found that if the bland foods are much more problematic than, than the spicy foods, right? 
So one is just aggravating a problem that's already there, and the other is in the gluten and dairy are actually causative and actually creating the problem. So that's what we want to get to, which is the real underlying root cause. And definitely have seen a lot of these cases, whether somebody's not moving their bowels enough or, or they get very urgent as, as this woman, woman is describing. And it's very fixable. What you don't want to do is just something that will bind you up. You know, it's like, oh, take a modium. Fine if you're about to get on a plane and you don't want to have an accident, I get it. But day to day, it's again, it's just that band-aid. It's just sort of hushing up the problem, not getting to the root of it. Your body has a reason that it's not desiring processing food. And it's just saying, no, I can't do it right now. Just dump a bunch of water in there. There's a reason for that. And when you find that reason, you don't have the problem anymore. And it's really, really key to find the reason because when you're having this type of looseness, you're not absorbing the nutrition. You can be eating the most perfect food, but you're not actually getting it because it's passing through your body too quickly. I hope that makes sense. So the next question had to do with a woman who is on um, an antacid. It's called a PPI, proton pump inhibitor. She's been on this for decades, and she said she feels like it's, it's killing her. Um, first of all, she's not far off in that there's you, you, 15 years is kind of the threshold and, and she's like 35 um, years of being on this medication. So there is a hazard of being on it too long. And of course, one of the basic hazards is that, again, you're not getting to the root cause of why you have this acid reflux. If you've ever had heartburn or acid reflux, very annoying, very painful. You're just so uncomfortable. And what it means is that the stomach is, is going into spasm and squirting its acid, because the stomach's supposed to be a bag of acid, and squirting that acid up your esophagus. Again, there's a reason for the stomach to spasm like that. Some common reasons are food sensitivities, which we were talking about earlier. Uh, there's infections, where you can have a bacterial infection called H. pylori. You can actually have not enough stomach acid, which is very counterintuitive, and I appreciate that, but you can have not enough stomach acid that creates heartburn. Again, I know it, it doesn't make sense, but it is factual that that can be the reason. The other thing is that your, your diaphragm, the dome-like uh, muscles that allow you to breathe, bring air in and out of your lungs, can be... Um, kind of in spasm and not moving as well as they should, and that's um, causing the stomach to uh, react. So the, the diaphragm is high and the stomach's in spasm, and the diaphragm's not moving as well, and uh, the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm, and that's causing the juices to come up your esophagus. So there's a number of reasons why, but these antacids are, are, are dangerous. I mean, they, long term, they can cause osteoporosis, brittle bones. But also, other than your mouth, so digestion starts in your mouth as you're chewing, but then its first destination is, is your stomach where the initial phases of digestion occur. And every stage of digestion is predicated upon the one above it being efficient. So if the stomach is not efficiently breaking down the food, then when it gets to the small intestine, that's not going to be good digestion and absorption either. So. The problem with these antacids is it's not allowing the stomach to do what it's supposed to do, which it's a bag of acid and it's hydrochloric acid. And, and it's designed to be that, to break down all those chunks of food that you swallowed into a size that's appropriate. And then the contents leave the stomach and go to the small intestine where absorption takes place. So there's each stage has to be properly executed. So as soon as you're on an antacid, games up, you know, you're not getting that proper execution of breakdown of your food. So, and she was saying, God, you know, I can't even miss one dose and all of a sudden I'm so miserable. And it is miserable, but there really is a root cause that can be uh, isolated and treated. So uh, some people try apple cider vinegar, some people try um, hydrochloric acid, and you know you can definitely try these things and see how you do. Nothing's dangerous. If for some reason you get a lot of burning with hydrochloric acid, just it's just an excuse to eat eat a bunch, and, and that will absorb it, and that's fine. Um, 
but sometimes it's these food sensitivities or infections or imbalances in the, in the good bacteria and bad bacteria of the gut and or that um, uh, hiatal hernia I was mentioning where, where the diaphragm is sort of riding high and the stomach is in spasm up against it. So a few different reasons, we, we'll, we'll talk more about that, um, but I hope this helped. And I think the, the tenacity of realizing there's a reason under this and I just have to go after it and get to the root of it and not just suffer or not just keep taking a medication with dangerous side effects. That would be my, my message to both of these people who wrote in and um, you know, just keep going and get an answer and of course reach out to us, we're happy to help. So I hope that was informative. Please join the group. It's uh, really growing fast and uh, we're gonna be talking about a lot of different topics. I'll see you soon.